run into with home games is if it's a tight crowd and the rake is high, it's a hard game to beat. Uh, usually home games have a little bit more looser players, but this one was very tight. Very, very tight. And then I missed four complete wraps with flush draws, so that didn't help. One of them was like a $1,300 pot to a pair of threes. Like, the guy had a wrap uh, as well as a flush draw. I had the nut low with the wrap to the nut high with the nut high flush draw. <clears throat> and he had a pair of threes to go with his on a 3.5 export. But yeah, that happens sometimes. And uh, so yeah, fortune did not go our way tonight as we we didn't really punt $1,000. Looking back at my play, probably punted about $130 of it when, it was, when I flopped a set. A lot tighter players, uh, higher end rake. So uh, those are hard games to beat. So yeah, we managed to finish March down basically about $2,000, which sucks. But maybe we're just destined to be down about two grand in March. So here's to April. Somebody asked me in a earlier question about bankroll management and how do I take losses so easily. You know, I watched a movie the other day called Meet the Robinsons. And one of the biggest things in Meet the Robinsons is they... Uh, celebrate failures because with failures you learn more than from your successes with successes you don't learn as much when I lose money I really look hard into myself to see what I can learn from those failures um, so yeah that's what I do here we are it's Saturday morning we have a meetup game scheduled this week has been a blunder live and killing it online um, I finished the month of March down. I was within swinging distance. I was only down 900, so it was really weird. I ended up having a $1,000 win, heads up, online, playing 50 cent one. Uh, and then I lost a bunch live. And then, yeah, so... Yeah, even the profit I made yesterday of $1,000, I lost about 1000 live. It's frustrating. I'm trying to get ahead. Uh, so it's funny because I was talking with Wayne about, you know, maybe when I'm down in St. Louis for the next week, I hate to say this, but maybe just grinding, hold them for a while. Um, or limit. I know they have a 2040 limit on Wednesday. I'm definitely gonna play that. <laughs> Figure out why online I'm crushing it so much where live I'm not. So I'm gonna make some adjustments and see what happens. So today's Sunday uh, down in Chicago. Yesterday I played at the meetup game for all day, 12 hours. Started off really good. Um, it's kind of a crazy day. Started off up like 1600 pretty much right away and then just ran into it. I made some incredible folds. Like, I, I was playing really well. I ended up being uh, even for the day, like literally dead even, down $8. And after two massages and buying the table tons of rounds, um, being down eight bucks is basically even. At one point, I was in for three grand. Uh, it was just frustrating, you know. Come down to Chicago. Uh, every day I've been up and down. So every day I've been like up 3,000 and then even. And then up 1,000 and then even. And then up 1,600 and then even. So, But we managed to somehow break a wind at the very end. Our games are crazy. I know good things are coming. You know, you, uh, you just got to keep moving forward. <laughs> I hate to say that, but... <laughs> I don't hate to say because it it's so true. So when you have a day or like a weekend, like I've been literally playing every day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I mean, I've got 50 fucking hours in four days now. And uh, I've got zero to show for it. I'm not down, but I'm not up. The thing that I keep reminding myself is, for example, yesterday there were plenty of opportunities to be up four or $5,000. Um, and I think that was the case for every day I've played today. <laughs> so 
even though we're even, I could very, not easily, but it would be very possible that I would be up 10 or $20,000 during this trade. What's the difference between a professional poker player and a recreational poker player? Uh, adjustments, 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 and reflecting upon your play. Uh, sometimes you'll play the best poker of your life and be stuck. There was a part yesterday where I absolutely hated poker. You know, when you're playing good and you're, you start off running good and then you're still playing good and you start running bad and you go from like a $1,600 winner and you're stuck two grand and you're still playing good. Yeah. You're like, you're like, why do I play this game? Again, I preach to all my students. If you don't question your profession of poker playing at least once a month, you're really not doing it right. And I did it yesterday, even though it was a great game. So yesterday, the meetup game went really well as far as everybody having a good time, uh, except for yours truly. Uh, we were in for $5,000 and we cashed out like 1,200. Every big pot that I was involved in just about, I lost. Sometimes in poker, when you get to the river and you realize that 10 high is not going to win, for example, the only move is to bluff at it. One of the differences between being a professional and being a recreational player is when you get to the river and you realize your only opportunity to win is to bluff at it. Before you do it, you have to stop and ask yourself, if I bluff at it, is my opponent capable of folding? If the answer is yes, that they are capable of folding. If they're not capable of folding, don't, don't punt. Don't waste the money, even if it's the right play. But if they're capable of folding, you are obligated to put the bluff in. You have to, because it's the only way you can win. So even if you lose, it's the right move. Yeah, the challenge, life of a grinder, sometimes you have to put the bluff in. And then sometimes you're going to get called. Hopefully I can show up at St. Louis. And I don't care what the win is. I don't care if I win $18. I just need to go play poker, have a winning session to reaffirm that, yeah, even after 17 years, Josh, this is what you like doing. Had a brutal weekend. Uh, I got invited to a home game here in St. Louis, a big O home game. Did pretty well, you know, there was a, uh, a whale there, if you will, and then like four or five ultra nits. You tend to get a lot of tight players in Big O, and uh, I always try mixing it up a little bit. I played uh, aggressive, but I played tight. I was happy to book a little win. Um, you know, in the midst of a downswing, any win is good, even though <clears throat> if it's just a couple hundred dollars, it's, you don't feel like it's significant, but it's important to change the momentum. So taking today off, today's Tuesday in St. Louis. When you are in St. Louis, they have a 2040 on Wednesdays and Fridays. The 2040 limit is a game that I uh, used to play all the time. It's a bankroll builder. It's round by round Hold'em in Omaha High only. So I should have an edge here, particularly since I used to play with these guys 15 years ago and none of them have changed how they play. They play the exact same way. So my goal tomorrow, because I got on the list, you have to call a day ahead of time to put your name on the list, but my goal tomorrow is to win a chunk. You know, win one, 2,000. My biggest win that I've had on a 2040 game uh, was like 7,600, and it was 2040 specifically round by round. Hold'em in Omaha. So 7,600 on a 2040 game is huge. It's a huge, huge win. Realistically, if I win like a thousand bucks, I'll be pretty happy. So yesterday in my off day, I uh, ended up playing online, ended up winning about 900 bucks. So, so much for an off day. Uh, game was just so juicy and on the club that I play in. Um, couldn't really pass it up, but you know, that was one nice thing about it being online is I was able to still hang out, get time away from it. But today we are working on 2040, round by round, Omaha Hold'em. So great group of people 
people I played with 15 years ago. Uh, so yeah, we'll hopefully do well. We'll see. So yeah, so far for an update mid-session, here we are playing 2040 at a mirror star. So far we're doing pretty good. The first hour I was basically observing, I was up like 500, had a couple of bad runs, uh, a couple of bad run outs. So then I was like down to $300. And with limit, the big thing is, is you just keep playing your game and you'll get there and make adjustments mid session. So I decided after observing for about an hour and a half, two hours that everybody was over folding in Omaha. On the Omaha rounds, they were way over folding. So I just started saying, I need to get really aggressive in Omaha, be really aggressive on my draws, because if I miss, I can bluff them. And if I hit, I might actually get paid off. Well, I pretty much pushed every draw last orbit and won every single one of them. So in one orbit, I went from being stuck 700 to up like 3,000. That's, that's what you can do in a 2040 limit game within 10 hands. I went from 300 to 4,000, so. I told my wife that, you know, my poker career started here in St. Louis. And, um, you know, I've had such a terrible run lately that this is like the rise of the Phoenix. I played Monday night at a house game and won a couple hundred and uh, played yesterday online, won like 900. And so hopefully, I'm hoping we can bank a significant win here. Something like three, four, five grand would be huge uh, for a bounce back. So that's, uh, well, that's what we're shooting for. So... Uh, let's hope we can continue uh, playing smart and running like a god. The hold'em rounds I play super nitty, just been mucking. Um, but the Omaha rounds, they are, they're not getting proper value on their hands. They're overcalling pre-flop. They're overfolding post-flop. This is actually a game that if I lived here, um, I, I would just print uh, because they're not going to change how they play. These are the same people that I played 15 years ago, and they're great, and they're a great group of people. I love playing with them. They're nice and friendly, but they've been playing the same way for 15 years, and when you know that, you can exploit them. And my job as a professional poker player is to exploit them, so I'm going to continue trying to do that. So played two-card poker here at Horseshoe St. Louis, and uh, in for 300, out for 1,900. So nice little session here. I only played literally three and a half hours I am now basically even for the month of April. So it's kind of swingy how things can go. It's April 6th, the first two days I started off absolutely disastrous, down four grand in the hole. And I think on April 3rd on Monday, I lost like 30 grand. And then by April 6th to be unstuck. This is the life of a grinder. Sometimes you just gotta put it back on. And it's funny because I mentioned to a few people, I said, you know, Omaha, I keep getting it in with the goods and keep getting it stuck in my ass. I said, maybe I need to mix in some limit games. Maybe I need to mix in some no limit hold'em, even though I think it's boring. And it just shows you, like, my career started in St. Louis. And I feel like this is like the rise of the Phoenix. Like, I was on this huge downswing, and now I'm bouncing back up. I've had five or six winning sessions in a row, which is amazing. So, Yeah. Now I get to drive back home to Michigan, so it'll be fun. Don't forget, play smart and run like a god.